Okay, so um, so we were looking at how uh, you know in the spirit there is a sense of feeling, like Paul Paul says he was provoked, he was stirred up, and it was in the in the spirit man he felt bound, like almost like his insides were tied up, and that was also in the realm of the spirit. You know, Ezekiel talks about bitterness and heat. And um, he also says, you know, Ezekiel chapter 11, we see that he says, um, the Spirit fell upon me, which means he felt the weight of the presence of the Holy Spirit, right? The weight of the presence of the Holy Spirit um, upon him. So all this we feel just like, you know, a physical senses we feel and we touch an object, right? And uh, uh, if we are sensitive, right, we, we feel. So in our spirit, we can feel. Okay. And we, we have all these scriptures to talk about that, to validate that, because there is a sense of, you know, Ezekiel talks about bitterness in my spirit, and uh, it is just something God has called him. He has his encounter, supernatural encounter, and he senses this in his spirit, right? Okay, then what about seeing? Okay, what about the holy, uh, the spirit sense of seeing? Okay, visual things, right? So again, when we look into the word, we see there are many things that people would see, you know, in terms of pic something like a moving picture, like a video, you know, and there are several terms given to it, like there's a, you know, vision, uh, dreams, and other things. Okay, so let's look at a few of them. Okay, let's turn to um, the book of Amos in the Old Testament, Amos, and. Um, Okay, Amos chapter 7. Okay. Amos chapter 7, <clears throat> verse 1. Okay, this is how it starts. Thus the Lord God showed me. Okay, behold, he formed locust swarms at the beginning of the late crop. So the Lord is showing Amos something. And uh, it's it's as real as if it was happening in front of him. So he showed him something, and he saw. Right? The Lord is showing him, and he is seeing. Okay, second, we go down to verse 4. Thus the Lord God showed me, because, uh, behold, the Lord God called for conflict by fire, and it consumed the great deep and devoured the territory. So here is again something that God is showing him, right? Um, then again, if you go down to verse 7, it says, Thus he showed me, behold, the Lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line and with a plumb line in his hand. Okay, so all these pictures, God is showing him and Amos is receiving this, perceiving this information. Right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we look at that. <clears throat> so the difference between vision and dream, yeah. Okay, so um, here, uh, so Amos talks about that, right? And if you go down to um, the next chapter, okay, chapter 8, again, verse 1, Thus the Lord God showed me, behold, or, you know, see a basket of summer fruit. And, and he asked, and he said, Amos, what do you see? So I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me. So here, the Lord is uh, revealing something. He's communicating something. And uh, he's able to see something. And uh, we know that it's, well, it's, was he able to see in his physical eyes? Was he able to see in his mind? Was he able to see, you know, the thing is that he perceived it. And the Lord showed, he perceived it. And, uh, and this is what we see. So the spirit man, we can say, you know, has, there is this seeing capability. Okay. Um, we'll look at some more of this. Uh, Okay, let's look at um, Job chapter 33. Okay, if you look at Job 33. And um, verses 14 and 16, 14 to 16, right? Job 33, verse 14. For God may speak in one way, or in another, yet man does not perceive it. Okay, 
So he's talking about God speaking, God communicating, and he's saying, oh, man is not able to receive it, man does not perceive it. Okay. Then verse 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man, uh, and so on. Right? So he's saying this is what God does um, when uh, in a dream, in a vision. And two different words are used there, in a dream and a vision. So um, like Sean asks, okay, what is a dream, what is a vision? So when a man is sleeping, right, it says, um, uh, when deep sleep falls upon men. So uh, you're not in control, you're sleeping, and then you have a dream, right? It's in the realm of your mind, and it's something that um, that you see. Uh, it's like a, maybe a motion picture, and it's like a video, and you see that. Now, what is a vision? Uh, it's something similar, again. Uh, we're going to look at one more, um, you know, uh, scripture uh, talks about that. And the Bible is full of these things, like visions full of these things that, um, that God shows. And so what is the basic uh, difference? We see there are, there are similarities. You know, it's like in, in this case, it talks about the person having a vision even while sleeping, right? dream, vision. But we know for a fact that a person can have a vision while awake. Okay. Um, but can he have a dream while awake? Of course, we say, you know, we, jokingly, we say, don't, don't daydream. Right? You know, because the person is just not focusing, not concentrating, thinking about something, and we say, okay, he's daydreaming, right? But the fact is that the person is very much there, right? He's just preoccupied with something else. But the thing is that a person can have a vision while fully awake, right? And it's a similar thing, like uh, it could be a picture, it could be a video kind of a thing where they're able to see, but they could be fully awake and see it. Okay? So that would be the probably the state of alert or state of being awake or awake or, or sleeping, that would be the difference, I would say. But the fact is that one can have a vision even while, you know, uh, asleep. So that is what we see in this verse, right? <clears throat> okay. So then uh, Ezekiel chapter 8. Oh, oh, okay. Before we go there, uh, another term, trance. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 8. Sorry, Acts chapter 10 and verse 10. Okay. So we see um, Acts chapter 10 and verse 10. Now this happens to Peter, right? Um, it says, Acts chapter 10, verse 10, then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made heavy, I'm sorry, made ready, he fell into a trance. He fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and led down to the earth. Uh, and, and we know that, right? And then he hears a voice and then he has this conversation uh, and so on. But the thing is this, that he, he, was, uh, he was getting ready for the lunch, for lunch uh, to be prepared and, and he fell into a trance, it says. So what? Again, you know, dream, vision. Um, here is uh, the Lord showing these pictures, kind of thing, and then here we see a trance. Okay, so when you look at the, uh, of course, when you look at the definition of trance according to dictionary, it says an altered state of consciousness where, you know, you 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 could be physically there, but then not responding to stimulus and so on because you're seeing something. Yeah, uh, you know, altered state of consciousness. But uh, you know, that's the. Uh, you know, the de dictionary definition or the scientific de definition of trance. Okay? But in any case, Peter seemed to have that kind of a, res you know, experience. Fell into a trance. There was something supernatural happening, a supernatural message where he, he fell into a trance and he saw a, a sheet with all these animals and he heard the, the voice of God um, saying, instructing him um, to do something. And, and he speaks back. Right in the trance. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> he saw in the good news. Is it okay? Okay, right. <clears throat> um, that's fine. You know, good news we know is the 
uh, you know that right the yeah it's simplified and also it's the translation of the mess of the thought not necessarily the semantics not necessarily word for word but it's actually thought for thought that's fine but um, it helps us to you know uh, if you look at the hebrew and then we see that okay, there's a different word used there especially that that verse that we saw job 33 um, is it the same thing it's these are two different words hebrew words that are used for dream for vision and so on so yeah so that, that is a, that version is a it, it like message passion translation it um, gives us the thought the idea behind that message so not necessarily word for word yeah Okay, so he sees he's in a trance. He sees this, and you know this has happened. And there's a communication from God, an important communication from Him. Okay, um, no, just we're going through all this <clears throat> of the nuts and bolts of this, just to for us to understand that the scope of communication, right? the scope, uh, the expand the scope of how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Okay, now we're looking at one more. Uh, uh, which is vision, Ezekiel 8 and verse 3. Ezekiel 8. Um, <clears throat> and verse 3. He stretched out the form of a hand and took me up by the lock of my hair, and the Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem to the court of the north gate of the inner court, where the seat of the image of jealousy was, which provokes to jealousy. Okay. Now, he has this supernatural encounter, okay, Prophet Ezekiel. And he mentions that, okay, he was brought in visions of God, which means that he saw these things, um, that he was, as if he was brought to Jerusalem, and he could see these things happening right in front of me, in front of him, right? Um, Okay, then let's turn to um, 11 and verse 24. Ezekiel 11, verse 24. Then the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea to those in captivity. And the vision that I had then went up from me. Okay, so, so in this vision, in this picture, which was, again, uh, facilitated or inspired or brought about by the Spirit of God. Okay, so he sees that he's in a different geographical location itself, right? He's into, in, in Chaldea, and uh, he sees those who are in captivity. Okay. So we see this happening. Okay. So we're looking at um, uh, Spirit of God showing something in terms of pictures, in terms of, and this showing things, like visually happens in all these ways it could be a dream it could be a vision it could be a trance it could be supernatural things happening okay this could happen because we see that in scripture okay um also you know when it comes to dreams I just want to mention that even when you look at the gospels right um we know that you know not all dreams are from god Okay, so that's another very important thing. It's not like every dream is from God. Okay, there are dreams which happen because of medication, dreams because of overthinking, right? Thinking of something, dreams because you ate something, all those things happen. But here, that doesn't, doesn't mean that God does not give dreams. Okay, look at Matthew chapter 1. Okay, Matthew chapter 1, uh, verse 20. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, um, but he... While he thought about these things, it's talking about Joseph, right? Um, while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. Okay, so... A very important communication, a very important message came to Joseph. God actually chose to communicate this to him through a dream. He was asleep, and in the dream, he has this. Look at how he responds. Verse 24, Then Joseph 
being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. Okay, so maybe he was used to having dreams and God communicating to him through dreams. We don't know. You know we don't have that information. But this is how he responded to a dream. Okay, this is how he responded to the instruction that God gave to him in a dream. It was a life altering decision. Yeah. So it was for him to go and take Mary to be his wife. She was already with child, the Holy Spirit. And uh, he had to, you know, go through a lot of fear, a lot of, uh, you know, uncertainty, all that. But then when he had this, this is what he did. Okay. Then we see another dream. Same, same man, Joseph. Um, if you look at um, chapter 2 and verse 13. Okay, Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Okay, again in the dream. Same man, a different dream. And in the dream, an instruction. What is the instruction? Take the baby Jesus. And you go to Egypt, you stay there till I bring word, because Herod is seeking to kill the child. Okay, so what does he do? Again, we see that this is what he does. When he arose, he took the young child, verse 14, and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. Right? He says that he just left under cover of darkness by night. He just he obeyed. But this was the message which was brought to him in a dream okay but that's not all you know you turn to chapter uh, yeah the same chapter you go to verse 19 now when herod was dead behold an angel of the lord appeared in a dream to joseph in egypt saying arise take the young child and his mother and go to the land of israel for those who sought the young child's life are dead i'm reading verses 19 and 20 verse 21 then he arose took the young child and his mother and came into the land of israel so we see three instructions three very important instructions and all the instructions are well i don't know you know if you had the, such instructions in a dream what would you think right these are dreams you know god speaking to joseph in a dream and these seems to be like very life altering life changing uh, decisions because he's he's moving from one place to another for the sake of safety, he's moving from again from that place and things are better. He's going and making a decision about his marriage. Wow. But the thing is, maybe he was used to hearing the voice of God. And he was used to hearing, obeying the voice of God through the, the God speaking to him through dreams. So he's very clear. Okay, God has spoken. No doubts, he obeyed. Okay. So the thing is. God speaks in all these ways, dreams, visions. Same with Peter. You know, he has this trance. He ha has this whole thing, and uh, and if if you see the end of that um, that portion in in Acts chapter ten, um, let's just read that. Acts chapter ten, right? Um, verse seventeen, and verse. Um, was sorry, 17 to 20. You know, Peter is wondering, okay, I had this trance, I had this encounter. Now, what do I do? What do I do? And then God says, you know, uh, thought of, he's thinking about it. Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, go down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Okay. So he has this confirmation, Holy Spirit speaking to him, and then he goes. So the thing is that God is communicating in the New Testament. In the new covenant and the new dispensation through these ways also it was not just with ezekiel it's not, it was not just with the old testament prophets but also in the new testament and you you know uh, how peter i mean sorry paul decided to go to macedonia because he saw a vision the macedonian man saying come help us and he uh, he knows that it was a message from god so so the thing is this we need not limit god say God I know that you'll seek only th this way God will use these all these scriptural you know forms that we see here uh, or avenues of speaking to us okay the Spirit of God 
will speak to us in all these ways. OK, um, we'll, we'll move on to another one, which is uh, hearing. OK, um, hearing can be an audible voice. Okay. Audible, what does audible voice mean? <coughs> Sorry? You can hear with your ear, right? It's like you can hear me speaking. Now that's an audible voice. So God speaks in audible voice. Right? God can, and he does speak in audible voice. Um, so like, for example, if you uh, look at, um, you know, we looked at Matthew chapter 3, right? Um, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. Okay. Suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. When did this happen? Immediately after Jesus came, came up out of the waters. Uh, after baptism, there's a Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And then there's an audible voice. This is my son beloved son in whom i'm well pleased okay so god can and does speak in an audible voice but also we know that it can be an inner witness okay it can be an inner voice you know that god has spoken and uh, but you know that it was not something that you heard out of your, your ear but you spoke it was it was clear but it was on the inside what you would call as the inner witness, inner voice. Okay, uh, it could be a word. Right? It could be a sentence. It could be an impression. What is an impression? An impression. A message can be, you know, it can be an impression of a message. You know, simply saying impression is, you know, you have a, let's say you. You have a you have some clay and you press your finger on it, thumb on it, you leave an impression. Right? When you lift your hand, you know, there is a the shape, your finger shape, uh, depression on it, impression on the clay, right? So it's something similar happens in our spirit. You sense an impression of a message. Okay, I'm supposed to do this. Right? When we are in the habit of hearing the voice of God, obeying, more importantly, obeying the voice of God. Then you know, okay, I, I sense this impression. I'm supposed to do this, okay. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so 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 while the audible voice is something that we hear with our ears, an external organ, but internally we can sense. It could be a prompting. It could be something that we hear. Okay, let's look at uh, Acts 21 and verse four. Okay, Acts 21 and verse four. Okay, verse 4, um, and finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. They told Paul through the Spirit not to go to Jerusalem. So there was something, information that was communicated by the Holy Spirit um, to, um, to these believers, and they told Paul through the Spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. So it was a prophetic word, something uh, uh, about the future, uh, and so they were telling Paul, this is what is awaiting you in Jerusalem. So please don't go. You know, there are, you know, you'll be imprisoned and all that. But Paul went anyway because he also knew that that is what is awaiting him. But for him, it was an, actually an opportunity to minister to those people because God had already told them that he will stand before kings and rulers for my sake. Right. So he, he saw it that way. So he went anyway. Right, so so we see that. Um, okay, what else about hearing? Okay, it could be uh, Acts chapter eight, verse twenty nine. Acts chapter eight. Okay, we're going through a lot of scripture here, and all of these are pointing to uh, you know different ways by which God speaks, and um, uh, hopefully it'll just open our understanding. Okay, um, Acts chapter. Uh, 8 verse 29. Uh, just, sorry. Okay. Um, then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. Okay. And the Philip said to 
Philip go near and overtake this chariot. So we see one full length instruction. Okay, it was it was just one line, but we see that instruction which was given to Philip. Okay, go near and overtake this chariot. Right. So we can say, that, okay, uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking. God is speaking to me, and it can be a sentence. Right. So just because it's a sentence or just one line, you can't say like uh, you know this can't be God. Right. For Philip, it was it was just one line. Right. If you if you look at um, um, you know verse twenty six also, we see that arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Very descriptive. Okay, it's almost like an address. Go to this main, this cross, door number, so such and such a thing. So then Philip, okay, okay, it's so clear, you know, so I'm going, I'm obeying. So he, he, he sets off, right? He arose and went. Now the Spirit says to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So can it be from God? Can it be from the Holy Spirit? You know, it doesn't have any, any more instructions. It doesn't have much description. It's just one line, go and do this. No, why should I? Right? So we begin to, but no, he did, he, he did exactly that. Okay, so God can speak in these ways. He can speak just one word, word of command. And that word brings so much clarity to us. That word brings so much of uh, um, peace to our hearts sometimes, you know, depending on the circumstance. Um, and that, that word is just what we need. That one word is just what we need for that moment. And it's just that rhema word which the Spirit of God brings to us. And it is something that we hear in the inner man. Okay, We hear in, the, um, in our spirit. And you're not able to explain it, but it's something that you hear, heard in the inner person. Okay, so words, sentences, and sometimes it's Ezekiel writes about the voice of like... Um, Rushing, you know, like the sound of rush, great rushing water, Ezekiel three. You know, it's it's like that. You know, uh, because when we look at uh, this thing, Paul's encounter, also, um, like uh, people thought that it was, you know, it was just some thundering noise. Paul could hear, right? He could hear clearly what God was telling him, right? So. So we see that for others it was it was some kind of a sound, and we see here that Ezekiel hears the sound of a rushing uh, river, okay, like the sound of mighty waters, uh, which is the voice of God. Okay, so the thing is um, this: while God can speak through all this, our ultimate reference point, plumb line, okay, what is it? It's the Word of God. So the Word of God is our reference, it's our standard, is our plumb line. Why? Because the Word and the Spirit agree. Okay. So the Spirit of God is not going to give anything contradictory to the Word. So that's why it's important for us to know the Word of God. Okay. Because if we are saying, okay, I'm going to lead by the Spirit, lead by the Spirit, and, and are not really grounded in the Word, then we could go off into error, right? Or if you're, you know, the other thing is this: if we are okay, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, just, I'm going by the word, um, principles of the word, and we are not opening ourselves to all these ways by which God speaks in these times, in the, in, in day, in today's time, and uh, um, if you're not open, if you are saying, okay, God, you know, God will speak, saying this fellow doesn't want to hear any other way, okay, some important instruction, let me just speak to him, right? But the fact is we are limiting ourselves, right? If you're saying, okay, prophetic word, I don't believe in that. Dream, no. Uh, vision, no, I don't think so. You know, we are just limiting. We are cutting off, right? So the thing is that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Um, the, the Holy Spirit, you know, testifies to our spirit, witnesses to our spirit, brings revelation to our spirit, communicates to our spirit, brings the prophetic words to our word to our spirit. And when he brings it, 
it's not always a sentence. It's not always something that we read it, it, I mean, in, in a sentence or a word, but it can be all these. It can be a picture. It can be a picture that moves. It can be something, but the Spirit of God speaks to us that way, right? Because we see it in the word, and it's um, we need to be open, right? At the same time, we need to be grounded in the word. Right, because that's the final authority, so that we don't go off into error. We, we, you know, check all these experiences and and all that with the Word of God. Okay, any questions or anything that you might want to share? Yeah, yeah, Francis. Okay, Francis yeah. How can we recognize if it's God, God-given dream? Okay, um, okay, same thing. You know, uh, like what what is the dream about? Content of the dream? Is it something good, bad, ugly? You know, uh, does it uh, contradict? What does it produce in you? Like, is it great fear? Is it anxiety? Is it? Uh, you know, is there a sense of peace about it? Uh, and in your spirit, do you get a witness? Like, like how you, you know, read the word and you know that God has spoken as an inner witness. The Holy Spirit actually says, hey, this is for you, right? You read, the Lord is my shepherd and the, the Lord highlights the aspect of his shepherd, shepherding. And, you know, there's a, there's a witness there. But the Holy Spirit does the same thing. If it is from him, you know, he gives a sense of highlighting, confirmation, assurance that it's from him. And we need to probably ask more for interpretation of it right so it will not contradict it will uh, there's a sense of peace and uh, obviously it needs to be interpreted you know some because dreams are um, uh, symbolic in nature for example uh, well the dream about the um, seven um, oxen Right. In Egypt, right, the king had the dream, and also about the years of corn. You know, so each of those represented a year of famine. So it was symbolic in nature. It represented something. It was not as if um, these thin cows are going to eat the fat cows. No, the fat cows represent something. The thin cows rep represented something. So, um, so the, it was symbolic. The interpretation also comes from the Holy Spirit. Because that's what Joseph said, you know, interpretation comes from God. So by the Holy Spirit, he was able to interpret and say, this, this is what this dream means. So interpretation will also come. So dreams could be literal, dreams could be symbolic, um, and interpretation also comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so God would choose to speak to us in dreams. And so, so what do I do? Practical ways, you know, I can make note of it. Write it down. Okay, this is what I saw. This is what it is. Then make note of it, and ask the Lord. Lord, you know, you show me. You know, is this something from you? Is it something that I can just discard? Uh, it's creating a lot of fear and unwanted emotion. I just want to you know, discard it. Or if it's from you, God, you just teach me, show me, and the Lord will do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Shira and Sean. I'll just ask Shira first. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, so smell and taste, right? Now, what the Holy Spirit brings in. Okay, so Shira's question is this, you know, there are these five senses. Okay, seeing, feeling, hearing, all that is fine, but what about taste and smell? Okay, um, is, there a, is there something that, well, God can. Okay, uh, God can uh, bring about a sense of, I, I forget the reference, but um, see, one, one thing is Ezekiel was asked to, was it Ezekiel or John? He was asked to eat a scroll, and uh, and and the, the prophet says that it was like honey in my mouth, but it went into the stomach. It was bitter. So was he physically experiencing it? No, it was a spiritual experience. So taste, you know, we know that can like God does that in unique ways for a purpose. You know, we don't know why. Uh, smell also can be, you know, it can be like you smell. Uh, a freshness you smell and it's not like somebody's deo or somebody's you know using a fragrance perfume but it's like maybe in a time of worship i remember once it happened here uh, 
we were having this five days of prayer and one worship session and i think it was somewhere around there and people were like saying hey, i think i can smell that and it's not like somebody walked in at that time with a you know wearing a perfume or something the same crowd so yeah it can happen and god can do that yeah okay so uh, sean how do you know if you've had a dream or a vision okay um the bigger picture is what do you do with it okay so that's the thing um so how, how do i know if it's a dream or a vision okay i'm sleeping and i've had a dream uh, or i'm sleeping and i don't know whether it's a dream or a vision i would say not get into it okay but uh, knowing fully well that this this is the major category okay i'm i'm sleeping and i've had this i'm awake and i'm having a similar kind of thing i know it's a vision so i would just leave it at that um like this happened to me once you know um so i don't know whether it was a vision or a um like i was living a very dual life as a believer like i was um, i'll just share this very quickly and then yeah, okay i was um, living a dual life as a believer very very freshly indulging in sin and all that and sunday was fine and you know that kind of a thing because of my work related travel and all that and you know i was doing a lot of crazy things but anyway this people are praying for me and one afternoon i was sitting in my hotel room and um, i was in sales right so i was sitting in my hotel room and i have this i was just uh, i had some time to catch the train so i was just it was in hyderabad uh, in the hotel room and i have this picture okay so i don't know whether it was a vision like i don't know how to call it that but it was a very clear picture about a child which was climbing up stairs you know like stairs like that going up a child is you know, just playing and um there are these gifts presents which are there in every step and the child is just happily going there and the child is holding on to someone's hand and picking up these presents and going and going and going and, going. and suddenly the child becomes very up, uh, afraid scared and uh, and it, because the way is becoming darker and darker it's going up it's becoming dark and the child is picking up all the while picking up these presents which are there but it's becoming dark the child is very scared and i could almost sense that fear and uh the child suddenly wants to let go of that hand okay he's holding a hand right so want to let go so looks at that hand that hand had become like a claw full nails and everything just and instead of the child holding that claw is actually holding that gripping the child and that was the thing and you know i'm just waiting to go catch a train um, and, and the, you know on the hotel and god was telling me this and immediately i had this understanding this is you you're the child now oh, i don't know whether it was a so i don't know the part but this was a message the message was this that you know you're the child you're playing you know you're just going around going after fleshly things going after sin full things you're just playing and you and you reach a stage when you won't be able to shake off that thing will have a grip on you and you'll want to but then it's got a hold on you you know so be careful it was a warning from the lord so uh, yeah so that was uh, you know the god could have spoken to me in many different ways i think he did but i was not listening but i have this picture uh, you know this he showed me this picture and that really you know created so much of this thing that i wanted to let go of all those things that i was doing come clean before god yeah so so the important thing is um, yeah what is the message what is god telling me sometimes it could be a very simple thing uh, it could be something to encourage us you know it need not be very very um, symbolic or it can be it can be literal also you know i remember one of those uh, one of our students um, you know past students uh, he's now ministering somewhere in chatisgarh side uh, yeah so he um, he used to you know he was doing an internship kind of a thing here um, so every day he used to go to north part of bang like elahanka side and go do some you know personal evangelism so the previous evening he'll have a dream previous night he'll have a dream okay in that dream he'll see himself he'll see someone else and it'll be a bus stop okay so bus stop he's going and he's meeting and talking to that person so that will be the dream so this happened for some time every day previous day and the next day same thing will happen he'll go and that person will be there he'll recognize from the dream and he'll go and 
you go share the gospel. It was as if God is preparing him. Okay, you need to see this person. You know, you know that you are supposed to go meet him, share the gospel. So it was a literal dream. It was not a symbolic thing. Like, what would that person? You know, what is the symbolic uh, symbolism before behind the person? No, it was a literal thing. So. And he shared, saying, "You know, Pastor, this is what is happening. I've been doing it, you know. So it's uh, it's quite exciting that God would prepare him that way, the previous day for you know these things. Yeah. Any other questions online? Yeah. So um, Jaya's um, question is, how do we know if it's you know it's our own imagination? You know, that's the thing, right? Because um, it feels as if it's our own thought. And when you have the dream, it doesn't feel as if somebody is given uh, something separate from us. We are so, we are in it. We are a character in it. It's all happening. It's so real. Right? And even when we get a message, or when it's so, so is it my own imagination? Or is it, uh, is it something really from God? You know? So, Chai, I would say that. Um, you know, we use all these tests. Right? We're going to learn about prophecy. We're going to be looking at some more instructions that we see in, um, you know, 1 Thessalonians 5, test all prophecies. So it's a test. We need to test all things. Um, but the thing is this, that, uh, you know, after having all these tests and we see that things are fine, perfect, but uh, we still have a doubt. Is it just my own thought? It is possible. It is possible. For us to have, because of our imagination, uh, it is possible for us to, you know, think these things and you know have these things. It is possible, but uh, the, the, you know, when it comes to maybe like 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 major decisions and things like that, we need to kind of test it out. We need to test it out, and we can pray, ask God. We can get people to pray for us, um, confirm, and God will confirm. Maybe God will give the same dream another time, you know. Um, maybe you know twice, thrice, just to confirm it. And God can do that. So the thing is, this, you know, all this we are talking about. Uh, what are we learning? We are learning that these are the ways by which we can hear from God. Okay. So this is what we are, you know, getting to the nuts and bolts of it. But the thing is, you see that the whole premise is relationship. Right, so it's based on relationship with God. You're walking with God. We're journeying with God. We are learned, We are we disciples of God. We're following the Lord. That's the whole foundation. So when we follow, when we continue to walk with the Lord, you know, uh, these things will be clearer. We'll be able to recognize the voice of the Spirit, um, you know, without any doubt. So that's the thing. So, so it's not an isolation. Okay, do I use these methods to find out? But it's actually part of our walking with God. Now, that's very important. Part of our intimacy with God, our relationship with Him. And you take that out, everything becomes a scientific exper experiment. You know, you do this, this. Uh, so, the, so that's the key thing, right? Yeah, so uh, we might make mistakes. Uh, we learn from it. We pick up and we we move on. We work on. Any any other questions? Okay. Um, any questions? You had ones. Okay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what do we do? Okay. Princess' question is: What if we had a good dream? A very clear dream, but we don't remember it. Okay, so that happens. That is why you know it's it's good to write every time we, even when you wake up, it's not there. Okay, then you can't do anything about it, and you can't be held responsible for it. So uh, yeah, just no problem. You just ask God. God, if it's anything, you know, uh, this is very very important. You tell me, show me. So He will He will show that. Like there are there have been instances, no, where people had the same dream, one, two, three nights in a row, same thing. And it was as if God saying, hey, in case you didn't do first time, second time, also I'm telling you, third time, um, you know, reiterating it. And um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Anand, that's a question. 
how do you interpret a vision so same thing as the dream we see that it all has all the elements of a dream right it has uh, a vision could be static like just one picture and uh, like god says no amos what do you see i see almond tree or jeremiah i think um i see this and the lord says okay this is what the meaning is so it could be symbolic right so um we so we use the same principles of interpretation does it contradict the word is it in line with the word uh, what is the interpretation of it the message behind it so yeah so we do that Mm. For us, Okay, okay. So someone, someone is interpreting your dream. Is that what you're saying, or somebody's? Um... This is what it means. Okay, so, so. Yeah, let me just yeah let me just explain it to the online student. So uh, one one student had a dream. The other student, while well, he was explaining the dream to another student, that person had um, these interpretation meanings come in, right? Okay. So it's good to share that. It's good to share that and say, okay, this is what I I feel it is. You know, this is what I sense it is uh, because that's what uh, Joseph did, right? He had the interpretation and he shared it. So it's good to share. It. But um, now the responsibility. Um, Anand's responsibility is to receive and test, and your responsibility is to also say that, "Hey, this is what I sense, but you test it." You know, if you say this is what God is saying, you know, it could it could be that, but then we we always present it, submit it, saying, "This is what I sense God speaking, but you test it," because He's the recipient of it. He's going to do with it something. So you test it, and God will confirm to His heart. So that's the way to go about it. Yeah, definitely, God will give the interpretation, right? Okay, so um, we have about two more minutes. So I think I guess we'll stop here, right? We'll stop here for today because the next topic is baptism in the Holy Spirit, and um, we'll do that uh, in our next session. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye.